talk about a um, technique called hashing. Uh, so we're moving away from um, discussion of graphs and we're going to talk about um, a new type of data structure called a hash table, which is basically um, used to store items um, for quick access. So um, what we want to be able to do is search for specific values amongst a collection uh, of elements. Um, so, um, previously, we've looked at a number of different kinds of data structures. We've looked at arrays, linked lists. Uh, we looked at binary trees and a binary search tree. We looked at graphs. Uh, and all of these um, are, are essentially um, useful for whatever purpose they have, um, but um, you know some are better at um, facilitating different kinds of goals. Uh, and what we'll be looking at uh, here in the next uh, few lectures is a hash table and um, and using the hash table specifically for facilitating search. So one of the um, common search algorithms that's available is a linear search, uh, which should be a pretty straightforward thing. Um, so you um, basically store things into an array. And then when it comes time to actually searching for elements in the array, you do a linear search. So you basically just iterate all the way through uh, the array until you find the element that you're looking for. You, you find the target. So if you find it, then great. If not, then uh, then on next iteration, you check the next element in the array. So if you find it, then great. If you don't find it, then uh, you find then you return that the target is not in the array. The complexity of a linear search um, is basically a big O of n. So if you're doing if you're counting the number of comparisons, or if you're uh, whatever it is that you're doing. In this case, if we count the number of uh, of comparisons. Uh, then the worst case would occur when the item is at the end of the list, so you're going to search all the way through the list, and then you'll find the element at the end. Uh, the average case um, uh, would be, you know, taken over inv invocations. So, um, so let's say you, you know, the first uh, time you go through this, you find it in the first position, second time you find it in the second position, so forth, all the way up to n. Um, the um, the total complexity of this would be. Uh, the num the that number of in or that number of comparisons divided by n, um, and basically uh, what you get is a big O n uh, algorithm. So basically a a um, a linear algorithm for finding uh, elements in an array uh, when using uh, linear search. Another type of search is called a binary search, uh, and you can do this on an array. Uh, in a binary search, uh, what you have to have as a precondition is an array that is that is already sorted. And the basic idea behind this algorithm is that you split the list in half. Uh, you check to see whether or not the element that you're looking for is the middle element. If it is, then you're done. If not, then you check to see whether or not the element you're looking for is either greater than the middle, middle element or less than the middle, middle element. If it's less than it, then you search the first part of the list. If it's greater, then you search the second part of the list. And th this is similar to um, a binary search in a binary search tree, except here you're using an array, um, and you do have this, this sorted uh, uh, quality to the list. Um, and if you actually look at this and you break it down, it, it behaves a lot like a binary search uh, in a binary search tree. Now, um, the, uh, the complexity of the um, binary search is basically big O log n. So you split the list in half. Uh, you check to see whether or not the element is greater than or less than uh, the middle element. If it is, then you search. If it's less than, you search the first half. If it's greater than, you search the, the upper half. And so, and then you, you recursively call that. So each, uh, each invocation is going to split your list in half. So you end up getting Again, this, this search that's similar to what happens in a binary tree, and you have an order log n search, which is actually pretty fast. But what you'd really like to be able to do 
is find the element um, as quickly as possible. And uh, if you can do this by directly accessing the object or accessing the element, then uh, that is more ideal. So suppose, suppose we have a really large list um, that has a number of products in it that we want to store the product IDs for. Um, if you have, you know, a, you know, the number of products is within the range of 0 to n, um, so the size of your data structure, then you can just, you know, have, you know, one product ID for every, um, uh, for every element in your array. Um, but if you have a really large range of IDs, um, uh, but you want to store it in a smaller data structure, um, you'll find that storing each product at, you know, in a product ID is pretty much uh, space inefficient. So what you want to have is a way to store the elements in, uh, in as small a space as possible, but at the same time um, provide for a wide variety of of um, things like product IDs. Okay, so uh, in order to do this, what uh, we use is a technique called hashing. And the idea with hashing is that uh, you want to be able to take um, this large range of keys, uh, but then be able to create an index of those keys into um, a smaller space. So. Uh, so in this case here, or in this diagram here, we see that we have um, a certain number of keys. We want to be able to um, use a function to hash those things into uh, some, um, some specific space. Um, and in this case, what we want to be able to do is have an array um, to store all of our elements. Uh, we want to be able to store all of our elements in that array and be able to access the elements directly without having to do some type of linear search or some type of binary search. We want to be able to directly map to the location where the element should be stored. Okay, so um, a common way of doing this is to use a hashing function uh, like mod. Um, so the mod function um, is natural choice because uh, if you use a mod function, then you'll always get a number in the range from 0 to n minus 1. Um, and uh, this also allows you then to store um, elements in array without having to limit yourself to just um, nine distinct numbers. So, for instance, in this example here, you'll see here that uh, the range of the numbers that I'm storing is from, um, from 17 to 9,388, but... Obviously, I don't want to have 9,388 different elements in my array to be able to store these numbers. So I use a hashing function to basically map the numbers to specific locations in, uh, in the array. There are a number of other kinds of hashing functions that are used, but uh, mod is the most uh, common, but in the textbook uh, in Chapter 10, they mention four other kinds of hash functions First one's called folding, where you take something like your key and then you split it into different parts and then you perform some simple operation on it. So, for instance, if our key was a social security number, then you could add the first, you could add um, a series of three digits from the um, social security number to come up with your key uh, or with your, your hash value. Uh, you could do something like a mid square function where you square the element and then take the middle of it uh, and use that as your. Uh, as your hash value. Um, you could do something like extract a portion of the key, so maybe in social security number, maybe we only take the last four digits um, and then perform some other type of hash function on it, like the mod on it or, or folding or mid-square. And the last type of uh, uh, hash function that's mentioned in the text is Red X, con or Red X transformation, where you take the key uh, and you uh, um, store it into or you convert it to some other base. So we're normally in base 10, we might convert it to base 2, do some manipulation on it, and then use the result of that as our hash function or our hash value. Now, the um, thing to point out here is that the hash uh, function computes where an element is going to be stored uh, in an array. Uh, and uh, the idea here is that there you know, using this function, there's a unique place where uh, the uh, element should be stored. Um, so 
So let's take a look at um, what happens, however, if, uh, if we don't have uh, sort of uniqueness within uh, these hashing functions. So uh, there's this thing called a perfect hashing function, which will produce a different index for every possible key. Uh, unfortunately, computing perfect hashing or, or creating a perfect hashing function isn't, isn't trivial. Uh, and they can be computationally um, expensive. Um, a, an operation like mod, like we've been talking about, it actually is not perfect because you can take something like, or anything that ends with a zero, and you do a mod 10 of that, then that's going to equal zero. And so uh, you would have the numbers 20, 520, 1,030, uh, all of those mapping to the same location. And that obviously isn't ideal. So uh, you end up having this situation where you can have two or more distinct keys hashed to the same index and what that is, is called is, is a collision. Um, so what we'll look at in the next um, uh, in the next lecture or the next podcast is this idea of a collision and how to deal with collisions because they're actually that's it's actually uh, uh, quite common to have collisions uh, when doing hashing uh, except when you have a perfect hashing function. So anyway, that concludes this episode.